we're, we're, we're even about to speak to Greg Oliver uh, from Chase and Whiskey all about Jack D. We can even bring Jack Daniels into a, a pure whiskey show. We'll, we we'll, get, we'll get the Coke out next and the umbrellas and the ice cubes. Justin, you've preempted me, my boy, once again. Now, people think this is rehearsed. and it's, Honestly, we don't rehearse this. You might, you might, not, be, you might not be sure of this, but we don't. Ta-da! This is probably a world first. Look this at is this a world here. first. Yeah. Nice. Nice to meet you guys. Greg Oliver. Hey, Greg Brian. Oliver from me, the director of Chasing Whiskey, the story right, of, of Jack Daniels. <laughs> now, how are you, Greg? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you. Uh, now, we've watched the documentary. Both Justin and I have watched the documentary. I watched it tw- I've watched it twice, actually. <laughs> And I have to say, it's, it's quite moving in places because the people talking about, you can tell the obvious love that the people working in Jack Daniels actually have for it. Because you're, you're talking to people that are maybe fourth generation who've worked there. And the story of Jack Daniels is actually a bit more, Chasing Whiskey's a little bit more than just Jack Daniels. It's a story of people, really. Yeah, I mean, I think that's we had to. It was tricky. We had to. How do you make a, a film about a, a brand, right? It, it was like a, a, a challenge. To, you can't make it about a bottle of whiskey, so it had to be about the the people that made it. And then we wanted to find the people that loved it so much because a brand that big must have love all over the world. So we traveled all over the world to find find fans and find out why they had like Jack tattooed on them and that sort of thing. So yeah. it was like a, definitely, it's definitely a movie about people and people out there. Def, there's a lot of whiskey lovers. Any kind of whiskey, it's like really. Amazing to see how uh, how passionate folks are about whiskey all over the world, and the fact that Jack Daniels uh, <laughs> so invested in the little town that it comes from. Greg, so, how many how many go through Lynchburg in a year? Would you say? Oh, I wish I knew. I mean, the town's really tiny. It's only like a few hundred folks that live there, right? It's, uh, yeah. But I know, like, the, uh, there's so many people that go through there because of the distillery and like the tours. When we were filming, there's just the river of people <laughs> coming and going. But I, I must be millions across the year, right? Coming and going, I would assume. But it's bound to be. It's bound to be. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, there's there's actually a quote in in the film where it says that the the film should really be a, a, a family movie. Really, you know, it's about a whiskey, but it's really a family movie, and it's funny because it. Jack Daniels, let's be honest, you know, yeah. whenever, you, whenever you talk about your Frank Sinatra's, your Lemmy from Motorhead, who we'll talk about in a minute, I mean, it's just, there, is, there can't be another whiskey like it. There really can't be. I'm, I mean, I feel like whiskey, it's a lot about, a, a lot of whiskey brands are the story behind it. You know, it's like uh, everyone loves a good story and, and something, if a bottle, something behind a bottle means something to them, it, it gives them like an idea in their head of how it was made or the place it was made. And it's it's like, you know, the, the, where scotch is made is important, you know, um, it's, so it's, it was really fun to dig into those stories and see how deep they go. And for, as far as like history, Jack Daniels is kind of hard to beat with that, those, that many layers of history and that much, you know, all the generations working there and all the generations of people that had grandfathers that drank it and passed it down. So there's that guy, yeah, that guy right there, we yeah. stumbled, we were in Cuba. And if you don't mind me just telling the story real quick, we want oh, to please. Cuba. Please. We wanted to go to places. I wanted to go somewhere where it was hard to find Jack Daniels, and it's actually hard to find a lot of American products in Cuba for all sorts of reasons. But we went to an after hours bar at like three o'clock in the morning, and this guy was one of the bouncers that didn't want me to come into the bar. Uh, mm-hmm. And then we found out that he had that tattoo on his arm, and we couldn't believe it and asked if we could come back the next day and interview him. And he's just, you know, a guy living in Havana that works at bars and loves. Jack Daniels. And I'm like, why do you love it so much? He's like, I just know that a lot of hard work went into that. And the people that make it work really hard and it just represents something real to me. And I was like, that's pretty amazing that, you know, people all over the world, random corners of the world feel that way. Jack Daniels basically got you VIP then the next night. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it did. It was like passport Jack. (laughs) Yeah, it was fun to be working for Jack and go into the only place we weren't welcome was in in in, in like uh, Kentucky, obviously. And there's a lot of bars there that they didn't want us to know. Yeah. (laughs) Now, there's there's a few. It's 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 a really sort of moving story in many ways because the when the the people are talking about it and the passion that they have for working there. And you can see the two sisters. Um, I have their names down here, Jackie and Debbie Stables. Yeah. And, and I mean, they come across as real passionate about where they're from. And it's 
it's easy to do it when it's a small brand. It's easy to be really invested in a in a in a really small brand, and you get that sort of um, quaintness and, and and that kind of thing. But when it's a huge mega corporation like Jack Daniels, and I still see that passion and the tattoos and the the, the people that work there, it, it comes across really well in the film. It really does. Yeah, Jackie and Debbie, like, as you mentioned, there they were. Um... They, it was we were filming the film, and then I started hearing the stories of Nearest Green and how there was a slave that taught Jack Daniels when he was like nine years old how to make whiskey, and this guy named Nearest Green, and then that Jack hired his sons or sons to work with him, you know, back then when he started the distillery, and then someone's like, oh yeah, that guy over there is his great great grand nephew. I'm like, really? And then <laughs> went and talked to talked to him, and then Jackie and Debbie became in the film, and they were just so excited to t t talk about the history and they, they told it's not in the film, but they told me that a lot of people for a while didn't believe them when they said they were related to nearest green that taught Jack Daniels how to make whiskey. And it was sort of this myth that was, you know, around that no one really was sure of. And then only in the past couple of years that they, people really put all the history together yeah. and find out that there's like multiple descendants of, you know, of Jack Daniels and of nearest green who taught him how to make it still working there. And they're super passionate, man. They love working yeah. there. It is a family to them. Hunt, you know, it's really, it's really, rare i think right how many other companies that big would have would have that it's, it's only whiskey can do it i, I mean i i, I say this I agree, from day yeah. one. it's only whiskey can do it you yeah. can't you can't do it with vodka and gin and and look, maybe possibly rum on a little part but yeah. you can't really do it with anything other than whiskey my uh hey, greg i have to have this is about the only cocktail jack daniels and coke um, cheers i'm drinking just uh, just jack because i don't have any coke i have coke zero here but i don't know how that would Taste with that's kind of a bad idea. Well, no, no, I'd be honest, mate, and I know this, this is sort of sacrilege, but I normally drink uh diet coke because ordinary coke's too sweet for me, so I, try, I drink diet coke. But I've tried diet coke and coke zero and all that in a Jack Daniels and coke, and it just doesn't work. No, it just it doesn't. doesn't. No, it doesn't. I don't want to do that. No, you don't want to do it. I like, like a nice highball though, like a seltzer highball with uh with Jack that works pretty well, or any whiskey actually. <laughs> yes, now what, what made you? decide to do the documentary on Jack Daniels. Why? How did that come about? I mean, I'm a, I'm a filmmaker. I've been making documentaries for like over a decade. The first film that I made that actually came out was the one on Lemmy that you mentioned in Motorhead and uh, spent three years making that film and it came out in 2010. And it's sort of like put me in this like genre of like tough guy, rock and roll kind of things. I, I don't get much fashion <laughs> work. So um yeah, every once in a while a job will come up you know i've done other i did like a blues documentary on johnny winter but lemmy and those guys had jack daniels with them every everywhere we went and looking back on it i wish i filmed more of it because it was just it literally every room lemmy would be in there's jack daniels around everywhere like on his stacks on stage you know in his dressing room um and so then when i someone said hey uh we want to throw your name into the ring for a jack daniels film i was like I, that's something i definitely could get behind um but it, it also sounded like a challenge, you know, like I've n I never made a movie about a brand before. Yeah. Uh, and I was a little nervous about it. I'm like, I don't know how we're going to tackle it and make it something relatable. But like you said, once you just dig into the humans behind it, then we can all relate to folks that are making it or drinking it. And I just wanted to go on a, but that that's, I'm, you know, been making films for a long time. And it just sort of, I had to fight for the job with like, I think it was 50 directors they were looking at. And then they narrowed it down to five. And I went and met with the president of Jack Daniels. Um, and I, it was the, I had to go into like a boardroom full of a lot of intimidating looking folks and uh -oh. nice press shirts. And, and uh, they said, how, how do you tell, how, you, how do you make a film about Jack Daniels? And I said, if any filmmaker walks in here and tells you they know how to make a film about Jack Daniels, they're full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Good mom. And so, so I, and I was like, including me. <laughs> so here, let's just, just work no, on it together. No. No profanities or other ways we'll be getting Zuckerberg. Uh, Zuckerberg doesn't like us. The, the woke oh, people will be myself. after us. They're full of beep. Uh, sorry, <laughs> beep, beep. Justin, bring up, bring up that picture in full screen of Lemmy. That one there with the guns. Oh, yeah. yes. Yep. Right. That's Wes and I, Wes Orshowski on, on my right, and that's me on the left on Lemmy's couch in his Los Angeles apartment. And what you can't see are glasses of Jack Daniels somewhere in the foreground. <laughs> I mean, how how cool was he? Was he as cool as I sort of think he? Uh, think he yeah, was he great. was. Man. He was. A, he was not an easy guy to work with. Like he wasn't like, oh, hey guys, come on in, let's make a movie. But uh, he was a fun, fun. He was everything you'd expect, uh, and and he didn't make it easy on us. But I like that for it. it was like a challenge, and I think it made me a better filmmaker to have things not go so smoothly. You know, this, so, this was your first film. 
I had made, I had worked on some done a lot of music videos and things before that, and then I was working on a reggae documentary that fell apart, uh, and then I met Lemmy. So it was like the first successful film, <laughs> first film that I finished. It's not, there's nothing like getting yourself thrown in at the deep end, like. <laughs> yeah, especially when you get there. Yeah, when you go in on the on the road with Motorhead, it, it's like uh, there's no there's no going back. So. Uh, I, I can't imagine now. Jack Daniels is a brand. Um, it's associated. There's a. I love this quote. I I can't express just how much I enjoyed this quote. It's whenever the, the two guys turned around and they said, when you mention Tennessee, people think of Elvis, Dolly and Jack. And it's just oh, unbelievable. You know, it's fabulous. There's, yeah, I mean, they're, there's characters, wow. right? Those, you guys ah. you can't write those lines. I know those guys probably said that a million times, but they those are their own lines. Like, I, you know, one wrote that, you know. And that's why it's such gold to hang out with these guys that are making the whiskey. You're like, oh, yeah, of course you guys work here for Jack Daniels. <laughs> yeah. Now, a few other things. And, and it, you, you, there's, there's actually a few things in it that, um, that, that show just the craft that goes into Jack Daniels. I know it's a mega, mega brand. But there's some craft stuff that goes into it that it all has to be made the same way. The, the live yeast culture, which is, is kept by them, uh, okay, it, it's, it's cultured and it stays the same and has done since Prohibition. That's something that doesn't necessarily happen in a lot of the distilleries in Scotland or Ireland. You know, the, 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 the focus on yeast. They also have the, the charcoal mellowing. And that, that can take actually up to a week to go through the charcoal beds. And that's, that's something you would expect from, from a much smaller brand. And to do it on the scale of Jack Daniels is, is enormous. Oh, yeah. I imagine they could save a ton of time and a ton of money if they didn't charcoal filter it, right? There's definitely ways to, like, cut corners and cheapen things and crank whiskey out fast. And they'd probably save, you know, tens of millions of dollars a year, but they yeah. don't. And, I, you know, I, 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 didn't, I didn't know a ton about the whiskey when I got the film. Same, like, with Lemmy, I, didn't, I wasn't, like, a Motorhead fan when I did that. And I came out the other end loving it. And then so I approach every film, like, sort of a na naive – outsider so i can really try to understand it and i one yeah. of the things i said i wanted to do was film every bit of the process so i could really see for myself and they said you can go wherever you want film anything you want the president told me that and he said if anybody tries to stop you call me and so i have the president's cell phone number and i only had to do it one time uh and and i wanted so we filmed every bit of it and it was like every step of the way the guys making the charcoal was such a fascinating thing to watch and see how those those guys that little group is so passionate about how they make their charcoal and they're so good at it you know getting yeah. in the perfect little size and then filling up these giant like shoots full of it <laughs> access uh, I mean, it was... all areas is very rare for a big corporation isn't it having carte blanche to fill them whatever you want oh i i yeah it's, it, it, I, I bet this will never happen to me again in my lifetime right who's gonna be like yeah go do film whatever you want those guys were yeah. truly said we have nothing to hide i mean the only thing that they were they were nervous about was the palletized warehouses that you see in the film yeah and I'm, I'm, I'm really glad you actually showed that because and it was nice that there was almost a bit of we don't really want to show this. It was a juxtaposition. There was a contrast yeah. between the, the traditional in the museum the side of things and, and, and the actual, you know, they're upright. It doesn't make any difference. It's still fantastic sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, I mean, I want, they, you know, there was definitely some heavy, has, they were like easy, it took a little while to get to film that and then it was harder to keep it in the edit of the film. Once all the corporate folks got to watch it, they're like, oh man, does this really need to go in the film? And I, <laughs> I was like, I don't, you know, it's, it's not showing it, it's it's a surprise to folks because yeah, you're rolling the barrels and all the commercials, but let's show how big this company really is. I mean, you're feeding yeah. the world. It, they wanted to prove that it was all made in Lynchburg. I'm like, let's show how it's all in Lynchburg. So that's that shot where, the guy's walking through like tens of thousands of barrels. Looks like the end of Indiana Jones, you know. Um, and and the, I, I love that they put it in there. Originally, they wanted to yeah. put it first, and then you'd see the guys rolling the barrels, so you kind of forget about it. I'm like, no, show the show it in the way that I want to show it, and then it's really makes it a well-rounded film if you can really be proud of that. And ultimately, they left it in, and I love that it's in there. And it, yeah. but that was like the one thing they didn't weren't sure of me filming, but everything else, they're like, yeah, come film it. I, I think it, I think it's much more much more honest to have it there because yeah. I, I mean these days everybody's talking about waste and and so on and everybody on a scale anybody that's above a certain scale all do this you know and the, the, why why hide it just tell people that's what you're doing well sure honestly the best policy. more Guinness is made in Nigeria than anywhere else isn't it <laughs> something like that Marty isn't it yeah I, I, well I think I think it's I, th I think we need to be careful with that, Justin, in case in case Diageo starts suing us for something, you know. <laughs> All right, that uh, uh, maybe maybe we'll, we'll, maybe we'll, true. 
We'll fact check later on, but uh, yeah. but, but Jack is proud that they don't make it in any other country. It's all made in. They said a lot of people don't believe that it's all made there. So I'm like, let's do our best to prove it. So yeah, you can't keep going wider. Then you got to go a little higher, right? So that's why they're stacking them that's higher. It. And it makes everybody, total sense. Everybody does it. They should talk to the Scotch bonnet guys. <laughs> Hang on, these guys. They put this little car. It's hardboard made that they put over that stops the the angel share. It cuts down the angel share. Yeah, just talk to them. They'll save a fortune. <laughs> but but, but I, I don't think I don't think the uh, white oak barrels uh, leak the same because the pores are so tight anyway. Do they really? No, I, they, I, they, I they all do, Justin. They all do. Do they? Do they? Uh, I think yeah. slower, right? I mean, that's why that's why Scotch. When we saw the film, we went to we went to Glen Morangie, and I didn't know that like a lot of Scotch is all made in use bourbon barrels because like the local oak there is too porous right so yeah they don't, they, plus it's also it's, it's much 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 cheaper much yeah. cheaper because How? they buy they buy the barrels for i think it's about 120 130 pounds and they yeah. actually try and buy them you know you get them made anywhere else and with all the new whiskey distilleries over there there's lots of ex bourbon barrels and they'll start to see lots of ex rye barrels and all this kind of stuff happening very soon whenever we're yeah. talking to brian now now there's there's some brilliant quotes in the film there's some brilliant ones. Uh, uh, the, the, one, the one where a guy says, Taylor Swift wins a lot of awards. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, Jack Daniels, they don't win the awards, you know, the, the best the, the Scottish, or best American whiskey and any of that kind of thing. But Taylor Swift wins lots of awards. Uh, what's the other one? Um, if musicians all drank Jim Beam, they would all sound like Kid Rock. Oh, that's a good that's one of my favorite ones, man. That's from Shooter Jennings in the studio saying that. And that was like another moment not rehearsed. We were he, they made they did the soundtrack. I was filming them doing the soundtrack in the studio. And uh, it was like two o'clock in the morning. We were all drinking a lot. I'm like, let's just talk real quick on camera while we have a break. And I yeah. threw that question out. And he just that answer was so good. And it's, <laughs> it, it's it's so great to hear these funny quotes just come out off the cuff like that. You know, the Taylor Swift one was not rehearsed either. <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny. It is funny. Uh, the part of the film is the, the, the how far away Jack reaches. So it goes follows a container ship all the way to Tilpa, Australia. This little, tiny little town. Yeah, uh, Tilpa. <laughs> that's just funny. Yeah, we, I mean, that was part of my pitch. I told, um, so the pre when I got the gig, I, the president of Jack Daniels, I said, what do you want to make sure comes out of this film? He said, people, a lot of people never, don't think that Jack is a real person. <laughs> and I said, I'll, I'll do my best to prove that, but I can't. But uh, and then I and then I, he said, a lot of people don't believe that it's all made in Lynchburg. And I said, well, why don't we film it being made and then film an actual order get shipped to the really far corner of the earth? And that at least prove that it's getting shipped that far. Otherwise, why, you know, and, and I'll, but I'll film every single step of the way. Yeah. Uh, and so we were uh, looking for a place. It was really hard to set that up, as you could imagine. I mean, we had the cooperation of. Did you have an A and a B team? Did you did, did the B team follow the, the container all the way to Australia while you did other things, or did you have to? No, believe it or not, we only had an A team the whole time. It was three of us: that me, a uh, cinematographer, and an assistant camera that would fly the drone to shoot that. And then there'd be a couple of producers with us, but uh, it was just a three-person crew. So, um, and the, what I did that so we could go more places, right? If you have a bigger crew. Then you lose your money. Then Greg doesn't get to go to Cuba, Australia. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Greg, Greg wanted to go everywhere. So. Or, or Japan to film these Elvis yeah. impersonators or uh, Teddy, te Teddy boys. They're the strangest folk I've ever seen. I've seen them <laughs> in other documentaries. They are weird guys. They are weird. Now, they, I don't think they are cool. I don't think they are cool. But I definitely think that Frank Sinatra getting out of a helicopter uh, with a Jack D in hand, that's cool. That is cool. I, 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 I'm a social... Look, look. It's almost the same pose. Me, me yeah, sitting here in a chair, just walking out. I, oh, what, so cool. So cool. Man. Yeah, it's hard to beat that level of coolness, man. But, you know, it's got to start somewhere, right? And everybody else mm -hmm. strives to be that cool. So The, the bit the bit where the, the American guys who are quite obviously well-oiled, well shall we say, are doing the karaoke, and then it cuts to the Japanese guys doing the karaoke. I absolutely burst out laughing. I thought it was so funny. I was good. That was my when that happened when those guys did karaoke. I was like, "This is going to turn into the best <laughs> moment in the film." Right when I saw them do that, we didn't tell them to do it. I'm like, "What are you guys going to do?" And they're like, "We're going to do a little karaoke, film it." And I was like, "Oh, we're because we already knew we were going to Tokyo." I'm like, "This is going to be such a great 
moment it's in it. That's actually the karaoke room from that movie Lost in Translation with Bill Murray. Wow. Same, same he, should, he should have won the Oscar for that. That is <laughs> that's a seminal movie. He should have won the Oscar for I that. Know, that's great. And Scarlett Johansson was something else in that movie. <laughs> I cried. Yeah, I cried in that movie. Yeah. Well, well I cried when we it. stepped into the room. We stepped into the room. You know, like for me as a filmmaker, you step into like a famous set where some movie like that was filmed. I was like, whoa, this is where they filmed it. It was so wonderful being there. Well, I'm going to tell you something about Japanese whiskey. I went uh, for a job interview at a radio station in 2006 in Fort William. And we were staying in the hotel. And I happened to say, what's that behind the bar there? What's that? I've never seen that before. And it was a fake whiskey, which a Japanese production crew had put behind the bar. And it was obviously something else in the bottle. Do you know what? We drunk it. I don't even think we had to pay for it. It'd been sitting there for years, but it was it was bloody bloody good. And it was it was from one of those like faked up movies of the yeah. fake whiskey. Oh, I got, oh, I got, oh. You know? <laughs> Sorry, well, I just I just I just love anything to do with Japan and whiskey is it it, it makes me happy. It makes me I, happy. I just I think he also love a freebie, Justin. Let's be honest. Well, who doesn't? <laughs> he, he had a he had a five thousand pound freebie the other day. He had a whiskey. Five thousand pounds it cost. Uh, but Justin, I I was not the master of my own destiny during that. You know, you were the one that chose to drive. You were the one that done all the tech stuff. I had I had the, I had to work. I had the interview and all, Justin. So I think it was a just reward. Now you met Frank Sinatra's daughter, right? You've met yeah. Frank Sinatra's daughter. Uh, I didn't know she had, had another daughter. I I thought it was only Nancy Sinatra, you know, kinky boots or whatever. Yeah, uh, or these boots were made for what? I didn't I didn't know he had another daughter. Uh, but you also met uh, who who'd you, who'd you meet there? The guy that played uh, Otter. Yeah, in the uh, oh yeah, John, uh, t- Tim Matheson. The Belushi, Belushi movie. Yeah, he, he he was up for it. But the guy that really caught my attention well, it was uh, the guy that wrote the books. Did he, did he not just say to you, you know, your documentary was that good. I want you to make a, a movie with me. No, he was actually hard to pin down. We were trying, because he writes <laughs> a lot of, of Jack Daniels into his books. And so, yeah, we, 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 we you know, we were trying to find someone that used it in literature as well as films. And uh, we were trying to bug him for an interview. And I think the folks at Jack offered, uh, you know, tried to get him in. We didn't pay anybody to be in the film, which is, which is a fun thing because Jack never pays celebrities to like, Hold the product never and so we didn't we, we there's a lot of big actors we tried to get in the film and they wanted a lot of money and we're like we can't we're not paying anybody man this is a documentary what whether you like it or not we're not in it or not so anybody in the film was not paid uh and so it took a while to, to get these folks to be like oh this you know this is cool this will be a cool film no one else is getting paid and uh he he was awesome he we went to his office where he writes and just sat down and he just started talking and ended up being like a really great character in the film and just uh, big, you know, whiskey fan, and and uses the the idea of like a whiskey to sort of enhance a scene. I think, as he says, in his books, you know. Uh, so yeah, he was a he was a really friendly character. And then he reads the whiskey speech at the end, which I I personally love that part yeah. of. It. Yeah, Ju- Judge Schwett. I thought I thought yeah. it was I thought that was fantastic. That that uh, you know, it's it's the balance of probabilities. Make your own mind up about whether whiskey's good, bad, or indifferent. I mean, I know. Uh, people in this country put whiskey in, in children's teeth. Don't do this at home. Uh, you know, to soothe them. Yeah, not they, medically, not recommended by the medical fraternity, by the way. And they also give whiskey uh, when you've got a cold here, you know, hot toddy for, for, yeah. for a cold here. And, and it seemed to me that everybody in the movie, uh, old stars, new stars, big stars, wee stars, the, the, the good old boys that work for the company, they really feel passionate about it. Really, mm-hmm. really passionate. And Nobody seems like they're acting. No, I mean, that, that's what's so great. Like, John Grisham doesn't need uh, us, doesn't need our like, press from our film. He's just cranking away books, and he's like, f- feels passionate. That's why he ended up doing it. Every Everybody that's in the film had a true passion for the brand, and that's what it weeded out the folks that saw it as like, oh, I'm going to be in this film, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to charge them, you know? And then those, those are the folks that immediately got shoved to the side, and now we have the real deal, the real lovers of the brand are, are in it. it. That's what makes it a special film for me uh, that we got the right folks are in the film. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, I, I, can't, I have to slag you off a bit. You know what slagging off is, Greg? Do, do I you? can't remember if that's good or bad, man. I've been I've been to Ireland a few times. I can't remember if it's good or bad. Probably not good. Uh, probably bad, but it's funny. No, 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 no. It, 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 
if you sla- if you don't get slagged off in Ireland, that means we don't like you. If we do slag you off, that means we do we do like you. Why is it that every single statue in America looks like every single other statue in America? Because <laughs> that guy could be Colonel Saunders, it could be Jack Daniels, it could be Mark Twain, it could be one of the presidents, <laughs> it could be one of the statues in the rotunda. It's the facial, it's the at, facial at, hair, at, Justin. At, at the Capitol building. They always look the same. They always look like they're made for a Hollywood movie. Whereas okay. statues in Britain and Ireland, Europe always look like they're different. There's only one statue that's ever in the movies. That's why. That's I don't even know if that's really a Jack Daniel statue. It's the same uh, footage. From another yeah, movie. Is, is, <laughs> is, is it like the plane that crashes in the movie? It's always the same numbers. Because <laughs> somebody doesn't ring up and say, "I've seen a plane crash. I've seen a plane crash." Oh boy. Yeah, but you're right. Statues that that kind of could be looking like Jack Daniels. I'm not sure. It's pretty cool though. There, it's sitting in front of the cave uh, that we got to go into. So it's a. It's a it's a it's a cool statue. Whether it does look like every other statue, though, you're right. <laughs> I didn't make it, man. I just made the movie. That, that statue's not my fault. All right, now we have to we have to talk a bit more about Lemmy because uh, the the whole Jack Daniels. I saw Lemmy. He was being interviewed by somebody else. The competition where somebody says, "Do you not eat breakfast?" And he left up a drink of Jack Daniels. He says, "That is breakfast." Now. <laughs> I, what, I, I just want to know a bit more about him. What was he? What was he like? Uh, like his diet? <laughs> just everything, you know. Because because the thing about it is, this is this is for in the in the the, the, the film you have Slash from Guns and Roses, you have you have Frank Sinatra, you have uh, Paul Newman, you have Lemmy for Lemmy. Uh, and it's just these really cool people drinking Jack Daniels. And it's just, ah, uh, even just sort of thing, being associated with these guys, that's pretty cool, you know? Yeah, I mean, there, there is definitely a cool that oozes from every one of the folks in this film, you know, like from Tina Sinatra's, Tina Sinatra, you know, Frank's daughter, to to like Shooter Jennings, everybody. Uh, so Lemmy, you know, we had Lemmy's bass tech, this guy Tim Butcher, who's a friend of yeah. Lemmy. We were able to interview him and then use some footage from my Lemmy documentary. And Eric Church is in the film, and he's just like, you know, he said his granddad drank it. And I believe him. That guy loves Jack more than anybody right now. He's selling, <laughs> out, selling out arenas in America. Um, but, yeah, everybody was really cool. Uh, just sort of like gravitate towards a brand like that, which is yeah. interesting. And, the, and that sort of helps feed the brand's identity while the brand also helps make everybody look cool, you know? Yeah, I, I, it's, it's fabulous. Now, the film, I – recommend it i really do i think it's it's a wonderful tale it's cool it's slick uh, and it, it, it's a family movie too because the jack daniels family is a, a, a very extended family but it, it's still a family so how do people get it can they download it do they get it amazon yeah, I mean, and how much is it right now you know it's like funny i think it's uh, spreading from country to country it's definitely out domestically in on like amazon uh apple tv Google Play and a few other spots, and I'm not. I think probably uh, Apple TV and iTunes over in the UK, uh, but it's it's come it's coming. The whole world needs it. Obviously, it just takes a little while. It's all streaming right now. Yeah. It was supposed to be out in theaters last year, and then because of COVID, we waited. Uh, but it's 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 coming, and it's for rent and to buy. And um, like like you're describing, I feel like it's people look at it and they're not sure if they want to you know watch a movie about a. Uh, a, a whiskey but then as soon as you start watching it you realize it's so much more than that and it's about people and culture and love and history and family and, and it's kind of all wrapped up in there and, and uh yeah the fun, i wanted to make sure it was a fun adventure like you see those these characters we went all <laughs> over the world so the least you're going to get out of it is a good wild ride all over the world to places you yeah. might not really get to go it as there's a couple of really cracking bits and as i say the karaoke bat i was on the floor laughing i thought it was hilarious <laughs> yeah. these two big guys have 41 years service so they actually got the uh full shave in the next town <laughs> for the movie and uh went around and into his wife's restaurant with, with a fried chicken you know what i'd love to hang out with them just to get some buttermilk fried chicken you know oh, what I mean? so good man you guys gotta go if you've never been to lynchburg and you have an opportunity to go that goose uh, that went to keep the chicken and randall <laughs> And I and I was just like, I know this guy, not just, I know this guy knows how to eat well, man. So I was yeah. like, where are we gonna eat today? And then he's like, we're gonna go steal some chicken from the kitchen of this restaurant. I'm like, let's go. <laughs> they're so good. <laughs> they're such good characters. They're not. It's like they're such colorful, like amazing 
characters that you would put in a movie and people wouldn't believe them, you know? Uh, yes, yeah. they're almost too good to be true. Yeah, I mean, look yeah. at yeah. They look like they've come from central casting. I know. But that's why it's like people don't believe, move, you know, people are spoiled by Hollywood movies. They'll watch it and be like, thought we, they'll think we cast them, but they're there. They're probably sitting in those chairs right now. They sit in this house uh, on the on the property. And if you're like a Jack Squire, which is basically like the fan, you know, like you're in the Jack family, if you're a Squire, you go to this house and Goose and Randall are there and they'll just, Sit there and tell you stories and hang out with them. It's it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Okay. Is it like a frat house? Is it? Yeah. yeah. No, it's much mellower than that. It's like a. I feel like a frat house is based on like bad alcohol. You know, <laughs> <laughs> cheap alcohol. Uh, Jack Daniels is more like a mellow vibe there, man. Very mature. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Um, I, I I look forward to seeing what you do next. Uh, I, I know you've made a horror film as well. Um, an award yeah, we did, I, film. I, yeah, I made a horror film in like 2011 called Devoured, which was a lot of fun. But uh, I mean, before you like make a film, it's like we, uh, my friend owns a restaurant. He said we could film in there and we wrote a movie about this restaurant having possible horror, this thing, horror things happen. So we had to shoot at night there uh, for like 28 days. And I wouldn't, uh, if I could go back in time, I'd write a movie on the beach somewhere because the last thing you want to do is hang out in the basement of a restaurant for 28 nights. It was a terrible. Yeah. Idea. But uh, we're making a movie. We're making a biopic on Lemmy that we're shooting next fall, like with actors. So we'll be uh, in the UK filming that next fall. Yeah. Well, do us a favor, pop over and see us. And I wish you a success. I really enjoyed the film. Uh, so did Justin. And um, thank you very much for joining us. Greg. Yeah. Thanks for having me, guys. Enjoy Take your care, night. Take care, buddy. All right. Well, cheers. Take care. All bye right. Bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Cheerio. Bye. Cheerio. Bye-bye.